I'm Linda Kemp, and I'd like to show you an alternative approach to painting. Okay, let's develop a few more leaves, or a few more blossoms, rather, in this area. Cutting around them with a mixture of the permanent rose and cerulean blue. One. Two. Three. Bring one down here, there we go, and wash the color away. I want that raw sienna in the, in the layer beneath to show through. There it is. Turn this over. And let's get a little negative in here to start separating out these leaves, developing the layers. The underpainting goes rather quickly. This part of the development certainly takes a lot longer. And you can choose to spend as much t or as little time developing your layers. It's up to you how particular you want to get with it. The more realistic you want your paintings to look, the more time you would spend and the more details you'd work into it. I like to keep my paintings nice and loose, so I make more general shapes and leave things up to the viewer's imagination a little bit more. Let's put a nice dark blue right in here. This is some cobalt blue and some cerulean. Pop a big hole right in there. Because I want the shape to breathe a little bit. Now let's deal with this shape. cut just a little bit too narrow. I'll wash it out. Reinforce the edge later. Alright, this is nice and dry, so I will develop a few more blossoms in this area. I have three different colors on my brush, and I want the blossoms to look like they're hanging down. So, Use a little bit of that leaf color to drop in there. And some violet. Oh, that's a little too pink. angle these blossoms down a wee bit so that everything's not just flying off that edge. That's better. This uh, leaf is, is quite light out at that upper edge and I think it's distracting a bit so I'll glaze over it with just a very diluted bit of raw sienna just to tone it down some. There it goes. And sharpen it down. I'll make two in there. One on top. So now we have one, two, three, and more layers going back. Doesn't take too much color. Just a little bit. Drop some in right at the edge to push it back. Yeah, I think that's better. I'll drop some raw sienna in there and a little bit of blue to push that area back. All right, let's break this shape up a bit. I've got a large bit of color, large shape, without a purpose. So I'm going to use some cerulean blue and break this down, make some interesting shapes out of it. Let's make a little blossom. There we go. So there's some nice little tendrils. I want them to be exactly the same. That's better. 
And let's do another one here and there. Soften this out a bit. I like that cerulean down here. Let's cut a leaf just like that. It's damp. And punch in a little bit of this nice cerulean. Let's put in a little bit of cobalt to darken that little spot down. There, that's nice. And so let's do it. If you do something and you like it, you can do it in another spot. Each time I'm doing this, I'm adding another layer, separating the blossoms out. The eye is attracted to the area which has the highest contrast. Value is the most striking kind of contrast that we can use, so I'm playing darks against lights in this area. It's a good idea to stand back every once in a while and have a good look at your painting and see where it needs adjustment, so I think I'm going to do that now. I've let this dry, so let's carry on with it. I'm just going to adjust a few more of my shapes making a few little corrections. I'm satisfied with the way that this piece has worked out and I feel that we finished with this one. Let's move on and see what we can do with landscapes.